turn 9. Um, things went as planned and I cleared the Arctic Dane on the surface and leveled up my leader to level 7 which was the objective so was pretty great and now I can take uh, Blood Brothers so in order to do that I had to take um, a lot of damage on my leader with melee attacks on him especially frost damage and he has a tiger and he has 20% frost weakness this map is really interesting to kind of exploit the AI because you've got a lot of choke points and narrow pathways so you can position your units to bait the AI and kind of let them do what you want so that's what I did I used the, um, tiger, the cheetah here to bait the four units and then try to get um, the units to come one by one toward my leader so that he can use the crossbow and he needed um, 70, 68 experience points and you've got 40 experience points from the from the killing blows 45 and then I need um, 23 more from the crossbow so that's at least four, four attacks with the crossbows so that's one and then I will need three more if I can get all the kingling blows on my leader so now I've got one more bleak warg toward me I let the penguin attack me in on melee to finish him and and then the bleak warg will, will also attack me you need to at the same time let them come slowly but at the same time uh, not let yourself overwhelmed by the number of units so that's why I let uh, bleak warg and the penguin attack me on melee and here I will have to at some point um, pick one of the enemy units and send him on the right otherwise I will be overwhelmed and I won't have enough time to really farm the experience so to do that I will use um, my elite cheetah because she has print and I will also combine this with my uh, rogue who has quick dash to be able to escape and also I use quick dash on my on my leader uh, to heal him otherwise I'm a bit too low on HP so that's I'm doing here it's a very interesting use of quick dash that you will see soon so here um, because the, the bleak warg has been taunted by my uh, rogue so we'll move toward the closest units and that will be my leader because I'm going to move all my other units further away and um, and actually no I won't I, I won't even need to, to, to use that because I'm using quick dash on my leader and so I can strike again and then I I finish the quick the, the bleak warg so now I used my crossbow three times and melee attacks twice so actually if I kill the enemy inside I should have enough experience so here that's the interesting use of quick dash so I, I let the mammoth uh, do devastating charge on me but that way I managed to bring him here and I, I have got enough room to uh, retreat with my units move back and, and then I, my aim is to split the bleak work from the mammoth so first I use sprint and I move away but I don't have enough movement points to really move uh, far enough and so then I use quick dash both to heal and to really escape then I need to um, split the mammoths from the bleak war and that's what I try here but it doesn't work so then I, I move with uh, leader, hero and a cheetah because it has lower defense and resistance so it's more it's a better target to bait the bleak work and here it works so then they are split and I can deal with them so I'm going to skip the rest of the fight so I level up to level 7 with my uh, leader and now as I said I'm taking blood brothers 
which gives strong will to all my units and actually 140% spirit protection so now I will be able to clear this lost library more easily and then I will do this um, and I will have the Goblin Apprentice um, have his damage reduced by one, one third and the Tyrant Apprentice by half but still the other apprentices will be dangerous but I think I can overwhelm them with sheer numbers and yeah, should go well. So the idea is to take the Hisberries, clear these two, and then probably move east, clear these sites. I've got a nice um, Forbidden Sanctum, so if I can if I can clear it, I might get an interesting spell. And then I'm rushing uh, the Settler this turn, but first let's recruit the hero, and then I will send the Settler here, and so. By the time I arrive, I should have cleared the three sites. Um, so I think it's better than to go there because it's farther away from my throne. So the hero, I've got a uh, sorcerer hero, which was what I wanted. And she has enchanted armor. Nothing crazy, but that's interesting. And she's uh, an orc, so she has victory rush, and she's okay on the ground, and she has night vision. So yeah, good good choice for me. And then, um, so let's rush the settler. By the way, in terms of racial governance, as I said on the previous videos, um, getting the um, the vassal released got me plus fifty from release city as vassal and plus thirty from made independent city as vassal. So I got plus eighty from releasing Sinue, which means. Oh yeah, when I settle the next city, I will, I will, I will get to very happy. But actually, I would still be very happy even if I did. Um, I know if I had absorbed it, I would not be very happy because you don't get any racial governance, racial happiness from releasing city. So yeah, actually, I had to release it as vassal. Okay, so my ro uh, my orc. Um, I'm actually not sure where I should send her, but maybe she can stay there and move with the settler. So I've got raised militia, but this time, uh, last time I had 10 CP, so now I'm not wasting any CP if I don't use it. So I'm not going to cast it to um, save on the upkeep. I researched this March, so now I can cast uh, Scott this March, which I would probably do. And now I'm hesitating between basic suffering, but I don't immediately need to go on water, so... Uh, warfare, Monster Hunters, but no hurry for now. And I still don't know what Marcus is playing. Of the beaten path, to speed up my, my scouts, Cheetah and, sco and real scout or Steadfast Ward, but I'm going for Steadfast Ward because it can really make a big big difference on difficult battles and it will allow me to clear very difficult sites. So even though it's 7 turns, going for that. And then I've got some unspent points. So what spell does she have? Harmonizing Energy, Magic Fist, Sphere of Protection. Interesting. Um, what to take it depends what role she will she will take in my army which is not really clear for now so let's keep it like this for now um, the Giants gave me another quest but I'm going to decline again because again it's flying units and I'm not going in this direction for now and I met the city of Ido Umbag, but they declined. They didn't give me peace, and it's a bit expensive, so I'm not going to buy it. And so I don't know, but it looks like Marcus is here, because the other one, Norm, I was able to see inside, and there is no um, quests units here. So I guess he got a quest from from Ido Umbag, and also the, you've got water all around, so it doesn't look like 
he's near it because in theory he should be here so I guess he's here but he's playing dwarf and um, and he should be around here so I'm moving my my scout to check this area while I'm moving also here to check the area on the surface uh, I think I spotted some mana somewhere oh yeah. here I spotted some mana and also I've got some nice sights so going here is also a good idea to clear on the surface and get the the, the, the heart of the blight so I'm probably going to settle here and then maybe uh, build a settler here and send him on the surface or build a builder okay so thanks for watching and see you next time